Welcome to laboratory assignment number eight. Today we're going to be working on chi-square tests. And so for SPSS application number one, we are going to be doing a one variable chi-square, also known as a one by K, also known as a goodness of fit. And then for SPSS application number two, we're going to be doing a two variable chi-square, also known as the test of independence, also known as an R by K. And so we'll do those two together and then you will do SPSS application three on your own, which is a one variable chi-square. And then you'll do SPSS application four on your own, which is a two variable chi-square. So let's go ahead and get started. SPSS application number one reads, in an attendance study, there are 20 students some of whom have been suspended for misbehavior. The primary conflict resolution style where one is aggressive, two is manipulative, three is passive, and four is assertive. Um, so the primary conflict style, resolution style used by each student is listed below. Conduct a chi-square test for goodness of fit to determine whether the observed frequencies of conflict resolution style are significantly different from the frequencies expected by chance. So in order to run this one variable chi-square, we're going to need to first come over here to our SPSS uh, data editor and then click on variable view. And in this first cell here, I'm going to name the variable and I'm going to name it a uh, con style. And then for the label, I'm just gonna do style. And for this one, um, since we're working in whole numbers the whole time, I am gonna go ahead and change the decimals to zero. And then I'm gonna click on data and click on that first cell there. And now I'm going to start entering all the data from SPSS application one. So all these conflict resolution styles. And these have all just, um, this is what we call coding data. When you take a word and you code it with a number, the codes are essentially arbitrary uh, it could be any number, um, but it's representative of that nominal data that we have with a chi-square. So anyways, I'm going to enter in this data now. Okay, and then I just want to make sure that I have 20, and I do, so hopefully I have entered all that data incorrectly. Um, and then the next step in running a chi-square is to go to Analyze, and then down here to Non-Parametric. Then we're going to come over to the legacy dialogues and then we're going to click on that first option chi-square so we're going to go ahead and click on that and then we're just going to take um, the style variable and we're going to move it over to the test variable list and then we're just going to click ok and then our output pops up and this is exactly what we were looking for I'm going to go ahead and label up my output just so I know which output goes with which lab. This is lab 8. And then same thing for the test itself. The first one we ran goes with app 1. Okay, just so I have that somewhere. All right, so uh, this is a breakdown of the frequencies observed. So for... Uh, number one, which was the aggressive style, eight people um, were marked as being in that category, and then two people for two, which was manipulative, three, uh, two people for three, which was passive, and then again, eight people for four, which in this case represented assertive. Um, and so here are the frequencies expected for each. You know, we get those by just taking n divided by k. And then um, after that, we can look down here at our test statistic and find out what our chi-square value is. So here it's 7.20 with three degrees of freedom, and that makes sense because our degrees of freedom calculation is k minus one. And we had four levels of the IV conflict resolution style, so four minus one is three. And then here is our significance, and sadly here we have 0 0.066, which we would round to 0 0.07. So seven cents is not less than five cents. So unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to reject HO on this one, but it happens. Okay, so let's go ahead and enter 
this information onto our worksheet. All right, so number one says state the null hypothesis. I guess I kind of got ahead of myself here. Uh, but state the null hypothesis. I've already written it, so let me reveal. There it is. Uh, all I did really was take this portion here, which is essentially the hypothesis of the word problem. So it says the observed frequencies of conflict resolution style are significantly different from the frequencies expected by chance. And then, of course, I just added that word not um, to make it the null hypothesis. So it reads the observed frequencies of conflict resolution style are not significantly different from the frequencies expected by chance. So then if we wanted to uh, move on to number two, it says we need to report the statistic in APA format. So if we were to do that, uh, we have our chi-square symbol, and then we have our degrees of freedom of three, which again we got from over here on our output, three. And then we have our chi-square test value, which is 7.20, and again that came from over here on the output. And then our p-value, which we rounded 0.066, to 0.07. Um, so we are sadly saying that that is um, not significant, so we'll have to accept HO on that one. And is there a significant difference in conflict resolution style whenever we accept HO? The answer to that is no. So five says, if there is a significant difference, describe it below, but there's not, so we're just gonna go ahead and leave that blank. Okay, so um, I'm going to minimize my output so we can move on to SPSS application number two here. Number two uh, uses that same data from number one, and then it just adds in the second variable, so don't clear out your data quite yet. SPSS application two reads, in this study there are 20 students, some of whom have been suspended for misbehavior, where um, here on the suspended data, one is the code for suspended, and two is the code for not suspended. The primary conflict resolution style, and those are the same as above, uh, used by each student is listed below. Conduct a chi-square test for independence uh, to determine if there is a significant difference in frequency of suspensions depending on conflict resolution style. So if we were going to state that null hypothesis again, I pretty much just copied and pasted. Um, it says that the researchers want to determine, um, and then of course their hypothesis is going to be following that, because um, they want to determine if their hypothesis is correct or not. So I just copy and paste everything after determine, and then add that word not to represent the null, and it is written here. There is not a significant difference in frequency of suspensions, depending on conflict resolution style. Okay, so now we are going to run a two-variable chi-square, also known as the uh, chi-square test of independence, or the R by K. And so to do that, um, we kind of take a different approach. First, we have to enter in the second uh, variable. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, first, I'm going to name it suspended. And I'll just make the label suspend. Again, I'm going to reduce that the decimals to zero. And it's really just a matter of preference when you do that or, or when you don't. It only matters if the statistics that you're going to get are going to have um, two decimals or two digits after the decimal or if the variables you're using are going to somehow need to be converted and then the conversion is going to have two digits after the decimal. But none of that is going on here with chi-square, so I just leave them whole um, as whole numbers. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and enter in this suspended data. Okay, so now that I have both variables entered, I'm ready to go ahead and run the chi-square. And so for a chi-square test of independence, you go to Analyze, and then you go to Descriptives, and then you come down here to Cross Tabs. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put Suspended as our rows, and we're going to put Style as our columns. And so this is just telling SPSS how to make your contingency table. And so after that, I'm going to go to statistics and click on chi-square. 
if you wanted to measure the effect size like we did with the coefficient of determination when we ran Pearson R's, you could click uh, this box here for the phi and Kramer's V, uh, but we are not going to be doing that today. So it's just there if you're interested. Now we're going to click continue. And the next thing we want to click is cells, and we tell the uh, program to give us the observed and expected frequencies. And then we click continue and OK. And then here comes our results for SPSS Lab 2. All right, let's take a look here. So um, first of all, here is the contingency table. Um, and so you can see that it has the levels of conflict style as the columns like we told it to do. And it has uh, the suspensions here for the rows like we told the program to do as well. And then it has all of the totals for uh, your frequency rows and frequency columns down here. Um, it shows your N is 20, which is good. That's what we wanted. And then if we come down here to uh, the significance test, we can see what our results were. So uh, we're going to be looking at this top row here where it says Pearson chi-square. And the chi-square statistic or the test value is 9. And the degrees of freedom are 3. And then our significance level is 0.03, which is great because that is less than 0.05. So we're going to be able to reject HO. Um, and so we'll reject HO at the 0.05 level because uh, here we're rounding this to 3.03. .03. So 0.03 is less than 0.05, but it's not less than 0.01. So we're going to reject P less than 0.05. But let's go ahead and enter all of this in APA format on our worksheet. And so here I have it written for us. Uh, the 3 is our degrees of freedom. And then the 9 is our chi-square test value, which I find over here. And then the P is our significance. And so 0 0.029 is going to round to 0.03. And so the next part of the worksheet asks you to screenshot and insert the contingency table from your output. So I'm just going to do that real quick. Take a uh, quick screenshot of that. There we go. And then in my preview, I'm just going to go to edit. Um, actually, I'm going to go to view, thumbnails, and then edit. Or you know what I can actually, I'm just going to click and drag it. So here it is. I'm just going to drag it to under number two. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to hide those thumbnails. Okay. So we're back. All right. So we did number three. And then again, our um, conclusion for number four, because we have P equals 0 0.03, that's going to be less than 0 0.05. So we're going to reject. And we're going to reject P less than 0 0.05. So is there a significant difference in frequency of suspension depending on conflict resolution style? So whenever we get to reject H, Oh, we answer yes to that question. So if there is a significant difference, describe it below. And so here I'm asking you to do a similar thing to what you do with um, explaining the interaction on a factorial ANOVA. I just want you to pick the cell that has uh, the highest frequency count and then explain that cell. So here we actually have two cells that have an equal number of frequency counts that are significantly different from everyone else. So I'm, I'm going to um, explain kind of this cell here for um, conflict resolution style 1 and suspended 1. And then I'm also going to describe this uh, cell here with the conflict resolution style being, a four, uh, being for number 4 and number 2 for suspension gives us a, a frequency um, observed number of seven. So uh, since we have a tie for our frequencies observed, I'm just going to go ahead and describe both cells. But really, I only expect you to describe one cell. So if you only described one, I would give you full credit. Um, but OK, so at any rate, oops, let me pull that back up and scroll. Here we go. OK, so if I were to describe those two cells, again, you're welcome to just describe one. 
Well, you could just choose one of those two. But in this case, since they're both the same frequency observed, I went ahead and described both. So it says there's a significant difference in frequency of suspensions depending on conflict resolution style. Students that used aggressive conflict resolution style. So um, that was coded with the number one. So here we have our contingency table. So students that had the aggressive conflict resolution style had the highest frequency of suspensions. Uh, one meant yes, they were suspended. So a one, for, uh, one for yes, they were suspended and a one for um, aggressive. So people that were suspended and, or I'm sorry, people that used an aggressive conflict resolution style had the highest number of suspensions. And then people that used the uh, number four conflict resolution style, which was assertive, um, were in the two for suspensions, which means uh, they were not suspended. So seven people that used the assertiveness conflict resolution style were not suspended. So I would say that they had the lowest frequency of suspension. So students that used aggressive conflict resolution had the highest frequency of suspensions, where students that used an assertive conflict resolution style had the lowest frequency of suspensions. And so that is how you do a one and two variable chi-square. So go ahead and do three and four on your own. That's it for lab eight. So good job on this one. Um, thanks for listening. Talk to you on the next one.